You're watching Oilers Nation Radio. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Oilers Nation Radio, this Tuesday's edition of Oilers Nation Radio. We're just starting nice and calm. No need to get too riled up about anything. NPR radio over here. <laughs> that would be good. Liam, can you put like some sort of a nice natural sound, yes. like a rainforest underbed to the start of this? Yep. A babbling brook. Uh, yeah, there you go. Or, or just like those spa noises, those like... I can just make them as you talk. I Please. just don't want to... <laughs> ah. Is this Halo? Yeah, sorry, I know, He's I know. He's relaxing. He's actively. Yeah, you guys really did. <laughs> We're doing a great job. Listen, the Oilers lost back-to-back games. Wow. I just don't want us to get too riled up. I think we all got to stay nice and calm. They're still right in the thick of it. Stay was calm. anyone else at the game on Saturday? Negative. I think it was just you. It was uh, It was painful in there. Oh. Vibes, pregame vibes, excellent. End of the first period. Not so. Not so much. We're all sitting with our legs the same way. <laughs> no. Two rights, two lefts. Two rights, two lefts. That's symmetry. Nice symmetry. Yeah, right? uh, that only makes sense if you're watching on the YouTube, not if you're listening to this show in podcast form. Uh, subscribe but anyways, to the YouTube channel. You should subscribe to the YouTube channel. That was a disappointing end of the road trip, BM. I'm sorry you had to sit through that. Yes. It's also shitty when it's a Saturday night. Maybe you get a couple in you before, then you go to the game. And you're like, this is going to be a great evening. And then it's like end of the first period. They've blown their foot clean off. Left and Last right minute of the first period. Yeah. That was something. That was annoying. Uh, but as we do almost every episode, we're going to start the show with our delicious debate. And it's brought to you by Wendy's and the all-new Daily Face-Off Survivor game, which is on right now at dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Anyone move on to day two? No. No. No, I, got, I was out again. I forgot to set my line Did you? I'm sorry. No. So there were eight options. They were all so hot. And only two of them hit. Ooh. So 90% of the pool is out after day one, which means 10% of you are still in the hunt for some delicious prizes from Wendy's, like the all new combo. It is the what combo, Liam? Um, syrup dipitous. Yeah. The all new French toast sticks and chicken strips at Wendy's. You can order them at Wendy's or on the Wendy's what? app. You can be a winner at lunchtime, even if you're a loser in the game. What would happen? If everyone missed, would they, everybody they move actually on? they have a plan for that, Liam? I checked this. Doomsday. Uh, it's the first two options is always a matchup of the day, so they have to have one oh, winner or one loser. That's so that's really so there's statistically you have a better chance of picking that option every time. I just think Wendy gets show. all the prizes. Yeah, yeah, just the burger. Wendy's no, the real Wendy. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, they all goes to her. Yeah, it makes sense. Her Wendy's app going crazy. Can yeah, I just yeah. mean Wendy having everybody's Wendy's out? App? Wendy's like. Ka-ching. House wins. Mm -hmm. yeah. House, House always wins. wins. All, right. All right. Delicious debate. The Oilers went four and two on their homestand, but it was a disappointing finish. Let's slap a letter grade on this bad boy. Dan, I'll start down at your end of the room. What letter grade are you giving the Oilers for that homestand? You got to give it uh, like a B minus at best, I would say. Uh, four wins to start it off. Really good. Two losses to not uh, finish it off with more wins was bad. Uh, the defensive effort in those losses was not there. Uh, the goaltending let them go as well. So yeah, it was a uh, it was going to be an A A plus, mm -hmm. but uh, down downgraded to a B minus. Liam, what do you think? I'll I'll go a little bit higher. I higher think, than a B minus. I think they were an A minus. Really? Wow. At the end of the day, they played four and two thirds of a really good homestand. They were they were bad in the third period, but also they kind of got against like, Tampa against Tampa Bay. They just ran into uh, Vasilevsky, who was red hot. Scored on him four times. Yes, but they also had fifty seven shots, and it Fair. took everything for them to score on them. And I never felt like they were out of that game until the buzzer honestly went. Like they pushed super hard towards the end of that game too. And then Florida, that was an F. That was a terrible game, the Florida game. But everything up until that was very good. They. They controlled a lot of the games, and well, who'd they be on the homestand? Carolina, Minnesota, which Vegas. was a bit back and forth, right? Uh, Chicago, Jersey, Jersey. So there's three. Add another one. That's four. <laughs> they were really what good. Was the in four of those was games. that on the homestand? That was before? the one before. Ah, I don't sure. think that was part of the eight game. Because no, 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 it was back before that. It all blends together. Right? Yeah, so one three, yeah. then lost three or something like that. Yeah, so I'll give them an A minus. I actually thought they were really, really good. Besides the last period of Tampa and then just the Florida game as a whole. Last four periods of the homestand. Yeah. 
So they played he downgrades them from an A plus to an A minus. They played 18 periods and four of them were bad. The other ones were good. Okay. So we got a B minus and A minus. Rick, what say you? I'm going about a B. So I think about 75% there. I'm kind of right where the uh, Leon is, or sorry, Liam is Leon Liam. Um, yeah, it was four bad periods. They're just the most recent ones, so they taste the worst. You can feel them right now. Everything before that was was really, really good and really, really positive. So I see no reason why to get overly down on themselves and get back out there and it's about six, seven games between the now and the end of the calendar year, I think. Try and start to do that uh, seven game in a row again. Seven and three in every 10 game stretch will get you back to where you need to be. So, so. there you go. Uh, BM, what see you? I'm looking at uh, the University of Ottawa. Gives me a handy little conversion scale here. Letter grade to percentage grade. Yeah, okay? I just looked up the percentage too. I needed to know. So Liam was a B minus. Rick was a B. I was an A minus. A minus. Or uh, you're an A minus. So there'd be a 90, 92 percent. Yeah, that was. I, what's a B? A B would be a 83 to 86. Okay. I, uh, all right. Fair enough. It was. So I think I'm going to slide in around a B. I feel like mathematically they were 77 percent. If you go by the period math, yeah. So then that would be C plus. Which they were better than that. Terrible. C's, get, C's get degrees. So what you're saying degrees. is B minus might be accurate. I think B minus would be an 80 to 82. So I'm going to go somewhere around the B, B minus range. I thought that they played really, really well for the most part. The Tampa Bay game, they were fucking so good. And the fact that they didn't even get a point out of that game, very upsetting. And Florida was just awful. By the time the third period buzzer went, I was just sitting there kind of, you know, when you do the, you swirl your beer around, yeah. like I wasn't drinking it. I was just kind of watching it. That's where my head was at by the end of Saturday night's game. So I'm going to so the B minus is what I'll go. B minus. I think I'm B minus too. I, I think that's going to be, well, not the consensus answer, answer, but close to the majority answer here is just because, again, like four and two over that stretch is passable, right? Like that's kind of what we need to expect from them at this point going forward is to win four out of every six home games from now to the end of the season. So, uh, yeah, you're right, Liam. Disappointing periods to end it. But there was also, you know, a period against Minnesota that didn't look good and some other areas that didn't go so great. Three of those wins were just dominant, like statement victories. The one against Minnesota, maybe not so much. And then, like, yeah, the loss to Tampa is one that's excusable, but then the loss to Florida is one that's not. So I think B minus is right. The Minnesota game, though, like, wasn't it at one point, like, late in the third? Minnesota only had like 12 shots or something like that. Yeah, that's fair. Stu they were all over them. Stu was, I don't want to say he wasn't, he just, there was that blip right at the start of the second, right? Yeah. He was, I, I don't know. He was. He had worse games. Feels like <laughs> in the streak or in that stretch of six games, we beat the teams that we were supposed to, and we lost to the teams that we should have lost to. At least from the no, standpoint, we should of, have beat Tampa Bay. Well, they're struggling right now. Yeah, I guess I just. What I just mean by and also you, never just by what you saw on the ice. Tyler was basically guaranteeing a win against Tampa Bay. Yeah, sure I said enough. Tampa Bay is not good, and then when the Oilers came back, I texted Jay and said, "Told you, Tampa Bay stinks." Nice. And then so they, they just guess, have very highly offensive players. And if those yep. four guys play really well, plus they're they've got two really good defensemen and one incredible goaltender. And Tyler does not know his own power. That's fair. I, yeah, I guess I just I look at like New Jersey struggling, Chicago bad, <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> up pretty, and down, yeah. pretty uh, pretty down right now. Mid. Yeah, mid for sure. Minnesota. But, I would say, ah, ah, nice. Uh, and then what was the other team that we listed? Oh, that'd be there? a good GSO shirt. Oh, yeah, the Devils. Yeah, <laughs> they've been up and down. Brothers. Yeah, they were. They've they've struggled to score a couple goals. They just they're power play merchants. We don't know anything about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it. I like. I guess my thing is, is the next three games are what are the most important tough. St stretch. Yeah, because you're tough got, goalies you got in this some, stretch too. Yep. Sorokin tonight. Here we go. You don't do your Tampa thing. We say Sorokin's not good, Tyler. Well, I wasn't going to do that. Sorokin, and they got what jersey on Thursday? Yeah, jersey, jersey, but, meh. But then you get your Sturkin on Friday. And the second no goaltending, in, yeah, uh, but jersey. But jersey plays their game, and and they jersey actually might the, be a, the jersey the team is very very good. Yeah. No, jersey didn't look good against us. Well, they no, skated the perimeter. All good. Good team, the though. Hughes brothers were They're a fine team, but I don't think they, they need some additions to that team just by watching that one game. Obviously, I don't They're watch a lot of them away from that. But like Hughes was around the edges and never really tried to break it to the middle. And didn't really use his teammates all that well. I made I a joke think. in my group chat. I feel like Tyler would like it. Jack Hughes is more skilled Ryan McLeod. Very fast perimeter player. Yeah. Jack Hughes is better. 
which is funny because they have Michael McLeod on that team too. <laughs> they do. Um, yeah, I, 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 I really like Jack Hughes. I'm probably higher on him than a lot of yeah, people. More skilled than Ryan McLeod. I just think like for me as an Oilers fan, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> when they came to when they came to town, I thought that they were going to be better than what I saw. Was my assessment? Luke Hughes play. was very <clears throat> unnoticeable that game. Can I put? A I was looking for him, but may I put a comparison on this year's New Jersey Devils? Yes, please. Last they year's feel year's very now. much like the 2018 Edmonton Oilers, where the expectations were extremely high. Because Heavy they, lies the crown, one might say. Yes, the expectations were really high because of how well they had done last year. They were a young group, and now they're kind of coming into it. And it's like they're in a really tough division. It's hard to be that good every year, and they're in that stage where you're learning about it. I think the blue line's probably better, but, but no Dougie team, Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton, like that goaltending is like was unexpectedly good last season. Yeah, kind of like what Cam Talbot was in a way, right? Like he was a Vesna candidate. Yeah. Nobody saw that that season, and then it kind of all fell apart a little bit the year after. I still think they're a very good team, and I'm not trying to write them off by any means, but like this kind of feels like maybe the expectations were a bit too much for what that group actually is. Yeah, I, we, we've kind of done it now, but we're going to save the preview of the road trip for a little bit later in the show. And instead, we're going to quickly get to, since we're talking about recapping the homestand, who delivered since we last recorded an episode. There's actually only been the one Oilers game. Granted, last time on Friday, Liam, it was yourself, Dan, Kennedy, and Waz. I'm Rick. Oh, oh you, you were here. All right. So we've only had the one game since the last time we did a podcast. We can still do our Who Delivered for DoorDash for a limited time. Our Canadian listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and use the promo code NATION25. Dash that for the win and make DoorDash your holiday hack this holiday season. I'll flip the order from the letter grades. So I'll go with BM first. Who delivered BM? Without question. Very, very easy. I was at the game on Saturday. Hunter was <laughs> so good on Saturday. And sure, you may argue that the mascot is for kids, but I say he's also for me. He brings it every game. He was dressed like Santa. Mm -hmm. He had his drum on. I love every time I watch him do the rail slide. And he was doing it right in front of me. You would have been... If you were in your seats, it would have been right beside you. My dad laughs out loud every time. He's probably seen it a hundred times now. Every time Hunter does the rail slide, or back up, uh, or Hunter does another bit where he'll go find someone in the crowd with popcorn, and he'll be like, oh, "Can I have a piece?" And he'll <laughs> take it and dump the whole thing on his head. And my dad, it sends him. It's so funny. So he did it again, the popcorn <laughs> trick. You know what? I can watch that on repeat. It's like a Seinfeld episode. I'll just keep watching. So, you know what, Hunter, you delivered, like Rick said, every time, but I was there on Saturday for my first trip to Rogers Place this season. Hunter was great, dressed like Santa. He was throwing out presents. The t-shirt toss was fantastic. Hunter, you brought the vibes, even though the team on the ice did not. Rick, who delivered? Well, I'll take the easy one. That, well, I guess the second easy one then. Uh, he you. keeps his, his multi-point streak going here. It's Connor. You mm -hmm. know, if there was one bright light out of that game is the fact that he, he was able to keep that streak moving. <gasps> And yeah, I mean, there's not a lot uh, of good to take out of that, but we'll give it to the captain. Liam, what do you think? <sighs> Who delivered? It's tough to pay. I wish we had the full homestand to pick from. Sure, I'll let you do that. Uh, but I already did that on Friday. Go. Um, <laughs> I mean, didn't Zach Hyman get the goal? He did. I'll take it. You need a goal, too. He delivered. Uh, here's a little one. Really I nice passing play mm -hmm. from those three as yeah. well. It's, I know we're going to get to it, but it's. Bums me out that the rest of the lineup couldn't keep shit going so that they had to get split up. But Yeah, we'll talk about that in our preview as well. We'll get to some lineup talk in a bit. Uh, quickly, as an aside, Sunil over at OilersNation.com. I'm not going to say his last name. I don't think I've ever said it out loud before. Anyway, Sunil wrote a great piece on Zach Hyman being a potential 50-goal guy this season. So if you want to dig into the analytics side of things and all of that, uh, Sunil does it absolutely wonderfully. I've been a big fan of his stuff. I love that he's over or back, I should say, at OilersNation.com. Can Zach Hyman hit 50 goals? Let's go around the room rapid fire. Dan, do you think Zach Hyman can do it? Yes, but I don't think he does. Okay. Uh, I think he'll get 44. I am going. Oh, maybe we should do that. Let's play a game. Oh, let's good. finish. Let's predict Zach Hyman's Zach Hyman predictions. What's he on pace for right now? Do we have that? About 54 to 56 in that okay. range. Dan, okay. what's Got your it. prediction? 48. 48. Liam, you said? 44. Okay. Rick? Let's go 46. BM? Let me see here. He's on pace for 54 to 56, roughly. Career high came last year with 36. I'm going to go 42. 42. I'm going to say dead on 50. 
Like I'm going to be the optimistic one. I like I'm going to price is right, you guys, a little bit. I love it. Like, this city will go bananas if he hits. 50. The encouraging thing is that he's scoring a lot at five on five. Like, he does get it. He gets his power play goals. I'm not saying he's not, but it's not like 11 of his goals are on the power play or anything crazy like that. No. Like, he's been chipping in all over the place. So, I like it from Zach Hyman. We'll see if he can get 50. Uh, Dan, you're up next for who delivered. Also, three game goal streak for Zach Hyman. Oh, bet it tonight on Betway. I'm gonna go to, I wasn't at the game, but I'm gonna do the same thing as Bag Milk and go into the stands. And I'm gonna give it to a uh, single fan, uh, Bang Banjo uh, guy. Yeah, Banjo guy on Instagram. His outfit was great. His outfit, uh, he dressed up as the Grinch. You can check it out on our yeah, uh, on our good. Instagram and our Facebook page. Uh, but just an unreal, unreal getup that that guy puts together every game, every single game day. He is there dressed up as something special. So yeah, you get my delivery. I was thinking about Banjo guy actually on Saturday because I saw him. Yeah. Um, and I saw the outfit. Like, oh, How could fuck. you not see? I was like, fuck, look at this guy today. <laughs> All out, dressed like the Grinch. That is a sad disrobing, though, after a 5 1 <laughs> loss on a Saturday night when you got to go home and wash the makeup off and stuff. Like, I was thinking about him on Saturday night when he was going home. He's just, yeah. ah, for fuck's sake. He's so he he washed it off again. He should have videoed it, though, and just. It just watched the, you know, like the shot of the sad Grinch getting the wash. Yeah, I want to see the whole story yeah. arc. Getting ready to the disrobing. Yep, 100%. Ooh, a behind the scenes liquid banjo guy. We could, we could that's a good content idea. You know Time what, though? Marks. Also, honorary who delivered my boy Nooch mm -hmm. 10 points in his last five games. He's dishing out there. How many points do you have now? 24, 25. So he's on pace for like 79. Yeah, he just needs like the assists are all there. He just needs some more goals. Yeah, a lot of them do. I'm uh, gonna <laughs> use I'm gonna use my who delivered as a little uh, shout out to Evan Bouchard who had his 13 game point streak snapped against the Florida Panthers. Although he still racked up six shots on goal, the defensive mistakes are coming out of his game a little bit, and a 13 game point streak for a defenseman is like borderline unheard of. That's stuff that only like Kale McCard and Quinn Hughes can do. And Bouchard offensively is right up there in the conversation with those guys. His shot has somehow given the Oilers another elite option on the power play, which is borderline unfair considering they always have two or two future Hall of Famers on the ice with them. So Evan Bouchard gets my who delivered for DoorDash. Uh, to answer the question specifically, Liam, 29 for Boop so far. Points? Yeah. In 28 games, eh? 29, 28. 22 assists. So the apples are there. He's an apple tree right now. It's just the goals need to come up. Oh, he missed on that breakaway the other day, too. It's like, and he had that rebound chance right in front of Bobrovsky yeah. where he threw the uh, glove hand out. A lot yeah. of bad breakaways recently. Yeah, that at home breakaway against Florida was so ugly <laughs> when they showed the reverse angle on Sportsnet. And you can see Bobrovsky like flinched right. Yeah, he and tried to guess. He tried to guess and just like moved right. And at home still just fired it like at his left knee. It was not a good look. Um, I was at the other end of the rink from that. I'm like, that fucking echo. <laughs> <laughs> also, hate to do it, but Sam Gagne's penalty shot. Brutal. That wasn't good. <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah, I, I filmed it. Great. I was so excited because it was coming right in front of me. I was expecting like a forehand, backhand 17 times and then some yeah, the, upstairs at the end. Just yeah, like he did back and like, oh, wait and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it was like he hasn't done that for a while. Yeah. I feel like you do it because like that to me I was just like in the crowd you, you kind of started to feel some life come back again because not only did Sam get a penalty shot they also got a bench minor for abusing the referee oh, so that it what it was yeah, two was like, man was it the same so guy? rare you see a penalty shot and a penalty on the same play yeah I believe it was Cousins it was, it was Cousins yeah yeah on tour got the penalty they didn't say what obviously what but it was just abuse of the official two a minutes I'm like oh all right I <laughs> I, I was very confused it. in the moment, and I thought, do they always put the guy in the penalty yeah, box? Yeah, for a second, I thought that too, actually. I, like, they I were doing never that. noticed this before. You got to sit and watch him <laughs> there. <laughs> you can't be with your friends. You have to think about what you did. <laughs> I did, and I mean, God love him for being positive in blowouts, Louis DeBrusque. I got a chuckle in the third period when he was like, you know, if Sam Gagne scores that penalty shot and then the Oilers score on the power play, you know, they're right back in this they're game. They're only two goals back at that <laughs> I point. I was like, well, I mean. The way and if they score a third goal and a fourth goal, it's a tie yeah, game. And, and well, I would imagine it would have been Hunter Ryan on Saturday. Yeah, it was Hunter Ryan and Louis. And we're all only 27 consecutive blackjack victories away from being billionaires. I don't know if you guys <laughs> saw that going around. Just an eight-game heater away from being back in this thing. Right, we always are. Check out the new shirt at nationgear.ca. We've sold a few of them. An eight game heater solves a lot of issues. Now we need yeah, another one. Well, so what's, what's interesting, sevens, you yeah, you got one. It's a check right. mark, green check mark, positive Tuesday or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. today. The thing is, Liam and I talked about this on ON every day today, which is now streaming live on Instagram, by the way, for those who are interested. Oh, wow. Um, the difference between the teams who got off to slow starts and hot starts, you know, the Vancouver Canucks played like 500 hockey the entire month of November. 
they haven't been that good for a while and they're still doing fine because they got such a hot start. But the loser point is so tough to make. Ex- exactly. Like the Oilers and Wild both had really good heaters. And because you lose a couple of games, you're right back where you started. This is when this is when it gets tough, though. This is when like it gets mucky out there. You're just outside of Christmas into the terrible time of January. Mm-hmm. This is when, you know, if teams can slip, if you can get another seven gamer in there somewhere in January, you can make a real climb. They'll do it. I said they'll get no, to. I know. I know. I'm just. It's the eight game. They can either. get it. They can get it this. They can get it this month still. Yeah. Uh, let's continue along with the show and talk a little bit about what we could see with the Oilers lineup this evening. BM, you hinted at it a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, bummed me out. Yeah, like that Hyman Nuge McDavid line was the so best good. line in hockey for ten to fourteen days, three weeks almost. It was so good. The dry side O'Kane duo, plus whoever happens to be on the right side, we'll say Connor Brown. They just couldn't piss a drop offensively. And it's really disappointing that two guys like Kane and Dryasidal, who we've seen be absolute drivers for this Do team. Do you know what's going on with Kane right now? I don't know. He's banged up. But he's skating now. So I think it's just like, a. I don't think it's anything that serious. So I'm watching, again, I'm sitting there on Saturday in my seat. And I'm like, I'm really going to watch Connor Brown tonight. Why though? Why did I do that? When I, I left, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go write my article for post game. When I get home, I'm like, I guarantee when I get home, his stat line is going to be zeros across the board. He had one shot on net, I think, maybe two in 14 plus minutes. Like, bro. Yeah, that's disappointing. His value is going to have to be. He's quality. fancy Leonard Petrol. He's well gonna enough. his his value is going to have to be quality, not quantity. When it comes to goals, now he can finish with seven goals on the year, but those seven goals are going to have to be high quality. Somehow, you know, third period type, uh, overtime type. Uh, we're not getting the whatever we're 20 goals we were hoping for. Yeah, now I had about 65 points. I think I'm gonna just we, a bit outside. <laughs> we, we can still get value out of them, but it's got to be highly, highly valuable goals now. I just like, man, I knew well, we should have assumed it'd be a bigger struggle for him given that he missed the entire season last year, but I did not expect it to be this grim. Yeah, I mean, I cap hit aside, it is what it is. I'll, 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 I'll man, admit it, man. Grand. I didn't really know what to expect out of the player coming in. I was know? hoping when Nobby came in, but like, oh, man, junior coach, come on, fire him up. I was expecting miniature Zach Hyman. We're not getting miniature Zach yeah, Hyman. So, miniature uh, Zach Hyman is James Hamblin. Right now. Yeah. Well, Hyman, light, light. Yeah. Double I'm light. still waiting for Connor Brown to. I think it's coming. I still think it's going to come. I think but it it's is going to have to be. Like, high, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, I agree with Quality, what you're. I agree with your know, assessment. Like, oh, thank God, there's that tying goal or playoffs. Like, game winner. Maybe, maybe we get a you know a percent a Pisani kind of effort out of him in the playoffs. Yeah, it feels. Oh, Mike- he's going to be my Pisani <laughs> pick for sure this it year. It feels Mike Pekka ish. Huh? Because Mike Pekka didn't do shit in the first three right? quarters of that season. He had like nine goals on the year as a whole yeah, in 06. Bro, he was rough. And you go back and you go back even further, and I know this guy's like a Hall of Famer, but Adam Oates is the same thing where. We got him, and all of a sudden, we had these weird, inflated views of what was going to happen, and it was just a whoopee cushion. Tell me, this is, he's not fancy Leonard Petrol. In 2011-2012, 60 games, four goals, nine points. No, oh, Brown will finish with more than four goals. Why does it give you any indication that will happen? He's so hit a couple. Fun. He's hit a couple goal posts. Had one waved off. That doesn't even count as a shot. Shots, yeah, not even shots. He's <laughs> way know, better but... in the last five games than he has been in the first. 19, oh, I, like, 10, again, 15, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for him. I was hoping that that goal that he got, that he scored, that wasn't a goal like a waved yeah, off. He should have like three or four, maybe five by now. But, but he has zero. Fancy Leonard Petrol. So far. Another issue I'm having with the Connor Brown discourse, and Liam, <laughs> we saw it today. People being like, trade him. Trade him. You got to trade him. To whomst? So pointless. Well, but also like you're on you're on the hook for the bonus already. Yeah. So why would oh, you, you are? That's what I was yeah. that question. Yeah, so <laughs> that three point two five don't go with him. No, so like it's kind of a little bit backwards to be like, well, trade him. No, he's 750k. You got to see it through, my boy. Yeah. You gotta let it let him yeah, play the so full year. That was my question. It was about the bonus, but if you're stuck with the bonus, then what what's the point? There's yeah. no point trading him. Yeah, unless you could package him and Jack Campbell together. Ooh, but then, now the, now what coming. kind of? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like that's going to take all <laughs> of like, our yeah. magic things to go with them too. Yeah, and I'm didn't Campbell get lit up again on the weekend? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah pulled. At what point do you have to play Olivier Rodriguez? Now, now, now. a week ago. <laughs> but no, like, are now. they going to do it? I agree with they you guys. Will. But are they going to do yes, it? Yes, you'll see it. 
You'll see it. I swear. You. I, I don't know that we will. You will. <laughs> they'll. They're that call. We're not going to notice it, but you'll see Ollie play a lot more than Jack. Maybe the he's fourth. the guy. He's the second. Who Ollie? Pick. I, yeah. okay, oh, I know. Like this yeah. is. Yeah. This. We have literally. We're literally raising two NHL starting goaltenders when we've never done it before. We just could really use a veteran that to uh, help him out a little bit. He's only played six games in the AHL. Like, stop playing Jack Campbell. He is what he is. Broke. Yeah. We know he's not going to, like... It's a 9.35 season. Ollie? Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of starting to warm up to the idea of, like, fuck it that he's a kid, you know? Just let him in. I mean, like... Are we done with Pickard? Is that what No, nah, Pickard's I don't know that we're done with Pickard, but, yeah. like, Saturday didn't help his case. No. But, like, we're trying to catch lightning in a bottle, right? So, like... Jordan there... Biddington syndrome is what we call that. Yeah. Is there maybe a better chance that Ollie gives you lightning in a bottle versus Pickard? Okay. So... If Rodrigue gets like 15 games and he's lingering at like 920, even like 915, 920. By that point, though, we're probably in February. Trade deadline's coming. You're like, hey, like maybe this is what we do. No, you give him a taste here in the next two or three weeks if you want to give him a game or two. There's no way. They'll, there's Start no way him against the Sharks. Him. There's no way the others lose to the Sharks again. Right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> I don't know. Like that's those numbers are very impressive. Pick it at a nine thirty nine in four games. What's what's uh what's soupies there? Uh, I'm talking AHL uh, numbers. Eight ninety eight or something. Like that. Uh, eight eighty eight. <laughs> my bad. What is he in the NHL? And he's played ten games in the NHL. Oh my god, it's so bad. Uh, eight eighty eight the AHL for ten games is like, bro, you're just you're. It's, well, we're not going to let up you three think, goals in like, almost all of them or something like that. Eight. 73 in five games in the NHL this year. Oh, so, improvement. No, yeah. no, no. 873. Yeah, well, an improvement in the American League. Oh, yes. 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 Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought <laughs> boy, a little bit boy, there. Boy. But, oh, you know, okay, sure. Let, let's go to this because we talked about the line combinations a little bit there and how, how that's kind of disappointing. But what do you guys make of the Carol Famelka rumors? It feels like they're starting to pick up a little bit here and the goaltending market is, I mean, it's an interesting one because LA clearly needs one. Uh, LA they, does? They need a backup. Tal, or uh, Copley's on long term IR. David okay. Riddich, not a backup. Can I no. introduce them in a gazpacho? Maybe. I Maybe have one to... just small thing. Sorry, just quickly. The Canes also need a goalie and the Devils also need a goalie. So Olivier Rodrigue isn't registered on the American Hockey League website as a, a goalie because he hasn't played enough games like on the stats. But he has the best save percentage in the American Hockey League this season. Assuming there's not other unqualified goalies. Yeah, assuming. Play him. <laughs> Play him. He has a 935 and Clay Stevenson on Hershey. He looks pretty old in 13 games. <laughs> Why does he look old? Is it the he has a beard. Of you. <laughs> He's from Drayton Valley. He's born in 1999. Which, mean, which means he probably has family listening to this. So <laughs> sorry, sorry <he's>, Clay. <laughs> sorry, Stevenson. He's actually younger than me. He, he is very older young. than you. So. <laughs> There you go. Now if we're only going we had the to technology to find out how old that guy is. Mm -hmm. 24. There it is. Yeah. He's so old. three years <laughs> younger than you, bro. <laughs> Looks old. Looks old to Liam. <laughs> it's a tough moment for you. It's yes. a tough moment of realization. Ah, You're not bad. the young buck you thought you were. Down bad. My knees will tell me that, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, anyways, the goalie market is starting to starting to look like there's a lot more buyers than sellers because the Red Wings are now motivated to hold on to all their goalies because everyone's getting hurt. Montreal still has Jake Allen, I guess. Arizona maybe floating Vamelka out there. Like, is, well, is why? I don't know why. Man, and also, I, sorry? Because he's not that good. Okay. 900 on a bad team last year. But now he's 900 save percentage. On a good team this year. I would take 900, and we've seen him have stretches. We've seen him have stretches God, where he looks really good. Man. How many games has he played in his career? Yeah, 60. Uh, I don't know. 100 and some? Because he had two 50-start seasons this down in Arizona. This year he has Zona. three wins on the year, and he's played 13 games. 115 games in his career. He's got an 899. I don't know. I still feel like if we're going to go get a goalie, <laughs> we need to get a, an obvious upgrade. I think Vimelka might be, be a, that I, guy. This can't be a, I, I know, but I, the thing that scares me is they use the word might. Yep. Fair. I need to hear this is the guy. Like, like last year, we in... kept talking about defensemen last year. And when they kept bringing up names, they were like lateral moves. Yeah. And I was like, I just, that, I don't think. And then it came along and we got Echo. And that was an obvious upgrade. 
That is what we need this year. We need another uh, echo. But like, if you say UC Soros, I know he's not available probably because Nashville's actually playing well. But that's an obvious upgrade. But I don't think you need to go that high because again, you're just looking for someone. I agree, you need an upgrade in the sense that like. You know, I don't love James Reimer because he's a Band-Aid solution for this year, then he's gone, right? I don't love picking up anti rant on waivers because he's not better than Pickard. I agree you need an upgrade, but I think Vimelka, Blackwood, that's the range of upgrade that's both realistic and a move that's worthwhile. The upside is definitely something to be considered with him. He is only 27. But I don't know. It's, just, it, it's really strange to me that Arizona, who is in a stage of like trying to compete, is like, you know what? Maybe we can get rid of this 27-year-old. Just Con- because yeah. like Connor Ingram's taking over that job. I don't know. He's just... Price tag? Uh, 2.75 for one more year. Yeah. And the other thing with Arizona is they could stomach soup. <laughs> I mean, ah. gazpacho. <laughs> um, but like, if, if that was the case, you got to send over a loaf of bread with it. But hey, right? Like, you're doing yeah. this in part because they agree to take Campbell off your hands. So okay, that so put that trade together for me then, because that's obviously okay. a first. So it's Cam- a third Campbell, first and third Campbell, Broberg for Vimelka. Mm-hmm. Full rip on Campbell. Full rip. Yeah, you've yeah yeah. I can't probably sign that fast enough. And uh, this is not a shot at Broberg. I still think yeah. he's up and coming and has an opportunity it's not going to be here i don't believe um it kind of leaves us in a big hole with defensemen down there but i mean i don't know where nemo's at these days this leasing guy i don't know if he can be a seven like it's he's just living his best life right now cruising he's like i'm on the pj <laughs> i just like having... texting all the boys in baco he's like you won't believe where i am and it's him on the jet Check this out. He takes a selfie. It's just like David sleeping. <laughs> In eight games so far with the Condors, Broberg has one goal, three assists for four points. Yeah, and I think he's playing. I think he's playing well, is what I've heard. And uh, I don't know. I just like having that next guy up down there. And I don't think there's another one after that. Then, like, there's not another defense. There's not another. There's not a Savoy. There's not a Petrov. There's not a Tulio. There's not some some guys kind of growing into the next Broberg, the next whatever. Yeah, it's Nemo, and I think you're people. Were, and I don't know, Warner, and I don't know what Nemo is. Warner's good, but, but Warner's gonna close. be. Yeah, that's two years, right? Yeah, yeah. People were roasting me for bringing this up on the live stream, but one thing we probably don't talk about enough is just how fortunate the Oilers have been with the injury bug in their blue line. You had to bring it up. Well, I, but it's worth noting. <laughs> what did like, I say about the power? Must be ratings. To, I know, but like that's season. one thing that like has kind of really worked against Broberg over the last year and a bit now is that. Everyone is just staying healthy. Yeah, yeah, he's not getting his opportunity. So he's not getting his opportunities. It is worth noting in any potential move where Broberg goes out that he is one. There, we're one injury away from him being clearly our sixth best defenseman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, so I wonder if there's a way in that deal, potential hypothetical deal with Arizona, you could get a defenseman. Like, is Matt like Dumba, Michael Kesselring? Is Matt Dumba good? <laughs> not really. <laughs> no. I'm not all that Man, interested I, in Dumba. I remember the talk around that last year, too. And like, oh, Kesselring. And dude, you have to get like, who cares? He hasn't done. It. And all of a sudden, here we are. <laughs> here's another reason it's, why. Uh, Ari- it's terribly funny. Here's a reason why so Arizona bad. might want a D man like Broberg to add to their system. All their defensemen are pending free agents, just every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. Granted, a handful are RFAs Moser, Kesselring, Valimaki, and Dursey, but like, it's just a shitload of you of free agents. Yeah, so maybe like, they want a demon. They just don't have. I know Broberg is too, there. but like Dumbo would be the one that's like, yeah, I would take a shot at him, but he's almost four million. I kind of like Moser. I think he's a guy with some upside. I like, him but too, he's young. I just don't think they would move him. Yeah, Valimaki. Don't think he's gonna be playing. Oh uh, yeah. Do you hear that Valimaki story hmm. that Frank wrote about on DFO? Hmm. So Valimaki got like a puck to the face or something yeah. like that. So. They took him to the hospital in Dallas. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the hospital was just like, you should probably go home and rest. And he was like, what? <laughs> like, my mouth. And his wife happened to be on the road trip and was like, no, you're not going home. And another doctor came and was like, oh, yeah, if you would have went home, there's like a good chance you would have choked on your own blood and died. Um, and, and then they, they, they yeah, put, didn't take care of him. And then they put 55 stitches in his mouth. Yeah. That's how big the gash was. And he sat in the hospital for four hours without any medical <gasps> care. It's yeah. pretty wild. <laughs> The NH- five stitches. Yeah, and then the first doctor says, "Just sleep it off. Just go home. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you oh, sleep on your side, yeah. though." So yeah. NHLPA rightfully pissed about that situation. Um, but all right, there you go, Carol Vamelka. We're torn on him. It would depend on the trade, I guess, because if you can get rid of Soup, like that's a guy who works. 
Yeah, and then Gregor, you just got to go find your goalie again next summer. Yeah. Didn't Gregor write today that you know there's can't move Campbell or something like that? Why? Yeah. Yeah. They can't, or like they're trying and are incapable of. I can't remember what, exactly what he said. He, the game how can you bring that up and not have any more information on Somebody it? Somebody put it on Twitter, but I deleted. I closed. Are oh, you probably muted? Probably them. muted them. Yeah. <laughs> Liam Sutton was like, "I don't want to see any more of that." <laughs> bye bye. That's not going to work for me. me find, hey Liam, check that mute. Yep. Mute, 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 mute. Let me find this. Happy birthday, Liam. Gadget. Mute. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know this is good. Riveting yeah, that's content. all right. It's all good, buddy. <laughs> um, not in the game notes. I got it. Oh. It was in the mailbag? Must have been from yesterday. Oh, jeez, Liam. Uh, <laughs> you're a rascal. Scroll yeah, we're just going to move on. Scroll Don't even away. stop looking for it. No, no, no. I'll find it. There's no real reason why. Like, if there was, you couldn't move him as in, like, somebody against the rules. Mean, we'd know that by now. And in terms of you can't move him, I don't believe that because we've seen terrible contracts get moved. Here it is. It's just not All right. very easy to cheap. Moving Campbell takes vital trade pieces out of their arsenal, and that's why a trade hasn't happened yet. Fair. It's easy to say trade Campbell, but much harder to do, especially if you want assets to acquire players who will actually help you win games. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but in, the, in that yeah. one trade, we used assets to move that one position, and then after that, you you do have to start moving you know, other assets, the other next first-round pick. It's almost yeah. like it's the GM's job. Yeah, there's but like, there's only so much. Uh, but like, just, how, does Vancouver have so many assets that they're able to just make all the trades they want? And they went out and got a good goalie at the start of the year in Casey DeSmith, who's been a solid backup, and they got their defenseman, and they beefed up their bottom six, and it's like, yeah. I'm just kind of tired of hearing the excuses. Of yeah. always difficult to trade yeah. me. No, I agree. It's because like, oh, everyone else does it. It's we th do, we him. say you can't do that with the players. Like, the players have to win. They have to go out there. They have to do this. They got to do that. Well, guess what? The GM's job is to do what he's got to do. Yep. And it's now his turn. He's got to figure out. He's the one. And I, he's the one who fucked this up. He did. And I don't mind the move as much. I think it was a couple of years too much. But in the long run, nobody saw this guy falling off the way he did. No. So I'm not going to sit here and like, crucify him as much as some other people want to do because it's just a once in a blue moon type of a situation but here it is I now it's time to figure it out should be fired still but ah well that's old that's just old white collar stuff they're gonna let him ride it out and take his and watch or whatever the hell he gets because and... of it it is like, hasn't been a disappointing year yet years not well, over. i would argue it's been very disappointing well i so mean like you know <laughs> It's not could failure. still get more disappointing yes. is what we're saying. I just think like that like, line from the Simpsons movie, yeah. the worst day of your life so far. <laughs> like everyone criticized Alvin and, and Rutherford last year for what they were doing. Like, like the whole vet trade wasn't enough and all this stuff was like, then they got Horonic and it's like, well, why are you getting this guy? We're rebuilding. And now they're third in the division and actually look like a pretty good team. They're better yeah. than the Oilers. Uh, yes. And we're just sitting there on our hands saying like, I'm not picking on Gregor here, but just like, Holland the other day is like, well, we're taking our goaltending week by week. Yeah, but he kind of, well, but I mean, he's like, well, what are you waiting for? Like, you don't need to say that stuff, though, at this point. It's like, yes, we are trying to fix this. Like, we're trying to make Or, like, better. we're aware of what the problems are. Yeah, like, are. week to week, like, but you know why? what that means like, what, because what, the longer you wait, the more expensive, the, the better, I, bigger I price that I can get. And, and I, I wrote about that this week, yeah. too. Of like, your patience may pay yeah. off. Like it's what just, if uh, it's just aggravating? Like what if Minnesota doesn't get back in the race and you can convince Mark yeah. Andre Fleury to come here? I think so. Is think he roll us be, in two point oh? That could be someone, especially after what happened yesterday. Maybe mm. he becomes unpleased there. That is wild. It was a part of the plan yeah. to lose the game ahead of time. Also, okay, but so the decision to not play Flurry in Pittsburgh appears even more bonkers. They play again tonight. It's a back to back. You have to start Flurry in one of them. Why wouldn't you just start him in Pittsburgh and start your better goalie against Boston? Didn't make sense to me. It's part no, of the plan. Make any sense. That's, my, that's my favorite quote. Who we put just, that on? It was all planned. The coach, coach says oh, yeah, that it was coach. planned ahead of time. Yeah. Yep. Flurry was not happy. So, Mark Andre, if Minnie stays out of the playoff race, we have a spot for you in Edmonton. Again. Could we afford that? I don't know what Flurry makes these days. 3.5. So at the deadline, keep half, send Fogel the other way. You're coming out ahead. Plan is to just piss him off as much as possible. Yeah. So Should we start sending him. letters to Mark Andre Fleury about how the the wild? Yeah, it's almost him. it's almost Christmas, right? So we had to like get on these these bouquets right now, get them mm -hmm. some flowers. Hey, he sorry you got screwed over yesterday, MAF from Edmonton. Your best yes. city. edible <laughs> arrangement. 
All right. Enjoy the chocolates. Uh, we are going to do a preview of the road trip, but first we're going to step aside for a quick break. Oh. All right. Welcome back to the podcast. It's time for Can You Clear This Up For Me with our boy Waz, and it's brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross and their fantastic travel insurance. Head to ab.bluecross.ca slash travel to find out how Alberta Blue Cross can help you protect your memories and more wherever your travel takes you. Maybe you want to come on the nation vacation. We're doing that with our friends at Alberta Blue Cross. That's true. Right now, nationgear.ca, 1999, based on double occupancy. It's going to get you your flight, your hotel, and your tickets to watch Edmonton versus Arizona. And you're going to be doing it all with us, your favorite Oilers Nation crew. Uh, happening right now, nationgear.ca. If you're like, hey, I'm not in Edmonton, or hey, I'm already in Arizona. I don't need the flights. We do have a flightless option for $999 as well. That gets you your tickets and hotel. And you can hang out with us down in Arizona. Can you clear this up for me? Presented by Alberta Blue Cross. Waz, let's go. First one is uh, clear this up for me. Why does no one want to hire Jay Woodcroft with all the firings I keep hearing on Twitter, especially like, oh, nobody wants Woodcroft. What's going on here? Can you clear that up for me? Um, I, I don't think no one wants him. I was a little bit surprised to see him not slide in in the Ottawa job. That was less surprising than seeing who slid in. Yes. I think the Jacques Martin hiring in Ottawa, though, is very much a... Interim get, thing, like he's all oh, get through the year. Oh, yeah, definitely he's definitely not going to be there that next year. Right? He's like, the he oldest coach in the long-term solution yeah. right there. I just think they're going to go through the proper process. He's the oldest coach in the NHL now by like a decade or something crazy like cool. that. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think you could bring in Woody as an interim. You find your way to get through the season, and you do your proper research, and you put them together in this in the summer. For all we know, Jay Woodcroft could be sitting there going, "Oh, I'm no, getting thanks. three million dollars this year." I'm going to wait till the summer and see what the options are. Like he'll get another job at some yeah. point in his career. So I think Woody can afford to be patient. So I don't know if it's a matter of no one wanting Woody. I think it's just awkward timing. Yeah, My nightmare scenario is when the Leafs get knocked out and Sheldon Keefe gets fired, that Woody slides in there. That is a that... nightmare scenario. I apologize for putting that in the universe. Yeah, that's mildly frightening. All right. I Next just, one. Sorry, I was just going to say was well, too. Like, yeah, with job offers and that kind of thing, you just have to remember that he... He gets to choose his spot too, right? But maybe other organizations have been developing that guy in the American League. Yep. Like maybe they just have a guy already. Like St. Louis did that, right? Like I know that guy's not going to be that long term, they've said, but maybe they just want to give him a chance to see what yep. he is. Maybe. Next up here, clear this up for me. The Oilers are not a ruthless enough as an organization. Everyone says they need to be like Vegas, but are there reasons why the Oilers don't man manage the Golden Knights? I always feel like the Golden Knights management is like the measuring stick for the Oilers in, gen in general. Uh, uh, I mean, what that <laughs> Vegas does that's unique, I think, is they don't, they're very much playing for today. Yeah. They will sell the farm. They will sell out reputation. They will sell a Vesna winning goalie for literally nothing if they think it's going to make them better today. And I, I think that in the NHL, at least in my opinion, that's a little bit unique. You don't really see teams as balls out as them, generally speaking. I mean, their owner said, we're going to win a Stanley Cup in the first five years or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They went out and did it. Thanks. And they were very, very aggressive with players that were loved in the market to make that happen. Like it, It's very progressive. And I think that's the way more teams should operate in the NHL because Vegas just won a Stanley Cup. Like, I just, again, I don't think you can just sit on your hands all the time. I think well, it's good to make change, too. Like, they just traded Riley Smith, who was one of their misfits, right? And, like, yeah. Yeah. loved so they could keep a younger Ivan Barbashev because it makes sense. Yeah, I just think that, like, you know, as an organization, I also think Vegas had an opportunity presented to the middle of their inaugural season. I don't think that this was necessarily the path that they had planned to take. I think that they had brought in a bunch of guys that they thought they could get more value out of by sending them outwards after, you know, playing out a season of fun in Vegas, but instead they had all that success and they completely pivoted their entire, their entire kind of thing. I think even what you mentioned, bag milk about Bill Foley planning to win a cup in, in five years. I don't think if you had asked him at that time, was his plan to cast out Mark Andre Fleury and cast out all these guys that were fan favorites in the city. I don't think that was it. I think it was just presented to them and they took that opportunity. And now it's just kind of their makeup as an organization. I also think Vegas can do that because guys are always going to want yep. to play in Vegas, right? Like, 
playing in Vegas as a destination. If it gets out there that the Oilers are a dog shit organization that treats you bad and will go back on their word, wave Connor Brown before getting his bonus, you might have a hard time getting guys to come up here. I don't know. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit like that, but you see in New York in baseball, yeah. the Yankees were a certain runway and, but everybody, everybody should want to go live in New York. And all of a sudden, guys were like, "I do not want to play for the Yankees." So yeah. I, th- but Vegas had nothing to lose. But they had nothing to lose. They were they were starting fresh. They can just go at it. And if you and you need you're in you're in the beginning stages of your of your franchise. You need to make a splash. Yeah. And the Oilers just happen to be run by a lot of older conservative dudes that you know that are trying to almost not lose and kind of as opposed to attacking a victory. Yeah, they're playing not to lose, not to win. Yeah, they're kind of, yeah. Like in some regards. And I, I think, too, like I agree, Tyler, with Vegas, the location for itself is a player's destination, but they also win a ton of hockey games, which allows them to have that flexibility of, like, well, players will want to win, and also they don't really sign players. They just trade for everyone. Yeah. And then they're able to convince them to resign. It's very interesting. I'm just looking at the team. Like, they got Petrangelo, who's sick, obviously, but, like, the rest of them are very much like traded for I call traded for Stone. Didn't they trade for Pacioretty at the time too? Like, yeah, give them all Suzuki. those guys, and then just like, okay, we don't need you anymore. We'll move on. Yep, I like it. Thank you. Uh, I've got two more here. <laughs> um, clear this up for me. I'm noticing that the measuring st- stick for Darnell Nurse is always kill McCarr. Everyone brings up how Nurse makes more than McCarr. Clear this up for me. Should Nurse and McCarr really be compared? No, no. A yes wife? and no. Because no, God, no. In the sense that, like, it's it, the only, and again, it's the issue that Darnell Nurse has is that he was offered a contract and he agreed to it. And that's the end of that. Uh, because Kale McCarr is the best defenseman in the league, he then gets compared to the higher paid defenseman in the league. And so it's just, like, it's not unique to the Edmonton Oilers, in my opinion. It's something that every other team has when they're measuring their top guy against Kale McCarr. Yes, and every, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of players out there who I would take Nurse first yep. who are making more than him. Exactly. The, it was the just the market at the time. It, yeah, Super. Warensky Jones. Frustrating, but yeah. Like, for I, me, I just like. Can you accurately compare Austin Matthews to Connor McDavid? In my opinion, no. No. Matthews makes more money. Point. Nathan McKinnon, same kind thing. of the same thing. Yep. In a way, Con- you take Connor every single time. Also, there's a big difference. Just m- the McCarr nurse contracts aren't comparable at all. McCarr doesn't have the leverage when he's an RFA. Mm -hmm. So they bought up all of his RFA years and I think like two UFA years. Darnell Nurse's contract is all UFA years. The player has the leverage. You have to pay to keep him because he has the right to sign wherever he wants if he gets to free agency. Kale McCarr is different. That's the way contracts work in the NHL. Your RFA years aren't as expensive as your UFA years. So, like, again, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince people that Darnell Nurse's contract is great, but it's not nearly as bad as some people want to make it out to be. Did he have a bad season last year? Yeah, there were some really tough stretches. But this year, he's been excellent. And again, compare it to other UFA deals. And it's not a $5, 6000000 million overpay like some mouth breathers want you to think it is. It's a $2 million overpay. It's which a lazy is, argument these people are bringing up. It, it, that's what I mean. It's it's lazy. Like, you can't be like, well, Makar, well, Miro Haskinen. Like, those aren't the same. No. Thank you. That's pretty brilliant. Uh, last one here is, uh, clear this up for me. Uh, this one's a little bit of a throwback. I always thought about this. Uh, Tommy Sallow, how come he doesn't get enough love from the Oilers? He had incredible numbers here during his time. What's the story behind this? Because I look at his stats... And well, it's, what kind of, I'll just kind of I'll put the, this, the COA out there right away. He did get himself into some legal trouble during the pandemic, so that would be why he's no longer brought out by the organization. Uh, but before that was, I think it's you know as Oilers fans, it's it's we 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 love Tommy Salo, but Tommy had one of the biggest I would say like mental downfalls as a goalie in in hockey history You're watching and one right now went from went from <laughs> went from the peak of being one of the top five goaltenders in the nhl to not in about in about a span of a year all thanks to and people just point at it as the moment when belarus wired a shot off of his neck and it went in the net his career definitely turned there but he was never a top five goaltender in the league he was at, he was considered it you know that, look at the names that are around back then there's Hall of Famers back then. There's yeah. more than Hall of Five Hall of Famers. I would say record. Tommy Salo was right in there, and maybe and maybe I'm glossing over it because I'm an Oilers fan, and, and I want yeah, no, to. I agree. I but, like listen. He he did a lot of good things for us, and we are still a 
uh, underdog team because we, you know, the salary cap wasn't in yet. We're still trying to fight our way up. We're a little Mac from Mike Tyson punch out. Um, so yeah, he got a lot more, uh, you like that? You got a lot more love from us, but I mean, you just look at the goaltenders that were in the league back then. It's really hard to say that, but it's, it's, I don't like, what kind of love are you looking for? What, what, what are, what are you missing out on? Like, would you say like he, he never gets really gets put into the same, like Nate, like, Compared to like Rolson, for example, is all 2006. Like, if without, yeah, without that, but regular season numbers wise, Rolson wasn't that great. Rolson, well, yeah, afterwards, Correct. but the team wasn't either. <clears throat> it's true, but I'm just saying, I mean, Tommy Sal, like, if he didn't have the legal issues, would he be in the ring of honor for the Oilers? No, not yet. There's only, not yet. Two, no, there's yeah. only two votes in the, the ring. What, what kind the of trouble ring has he get a lot into? of bit of trouble. Uh, he was, I believe, drinking and driving, allegedly, in my opinion, was the oh. accusation. Um, yeah, if you talk to fans who are old enough, then you'll get the positive Tommy talk. Um, but if you if they're not, they they really don't know him. They don't understand. Yeah, they just it's not the same. Yeah, I was and you don't have two thousand six on it. So yeah, I was also just looking at the numbers and compare them to the goalies after Tommy Sal. He had pretty solid numbers from that era compared to now. Hundred percent, he did. So it's just it's interesting. Also, was it normal for goalies to play like seventy games back then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We- yeah, the gone are the days of of seeing a goalie play more than like fifty games now. I just remember like Martin. You'll Broder. catch someone like sixty, sixty two, but yeah, those are like three. Martin guys. Broder at his peak when you like play literally every game outside of like a small. <laughs> he hit like seventy something. Yeah, but it was also games. normal to have three goalies carried on the roster and only have one for the shootout. That was normal. Just don't forget that. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Marzen. <laughs> right, sorry, from nineteen ninety six to two thousand and eight, it was only one season where Broder didn't play 70 or more games and he played 67. Wow. That is just yeah, but incredible. I love because yeah. you know these goalies, those goalies are sitting around on their couch and they're doing the exact same thing that the NBA play, the old NBA players are doing. Like, why do you guys need rest? Like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. 12 years out there, yeah, like 70 some odd games now. This re- that's insane. That that is why the most breakable record in all of NHL history is nothing Gretzky did. It's Glenn Hall playing 580 consecutive games as a goalie. That will literally, like, there's yes. no scenario where that ever happens again in the That's NHL. True. How many games? Like 580. So we're talking about, like... Seven seasons. Yeah, no. North no. of seven seasons while the game is. Goalies can barely play seven straight games right now. Never mind, seven straight seasons. We're talking about Stu being like, hey, 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 he's played eight in a row. Like, got to settle it down. 508. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks was yeah, no there you go that is your can you help me understand brought to you no. by oh no, it's not what is it can you can clear that clear up for me up for ah me? can you clear this up <laughs> for me wrong show. i like that you got jumped on by two people for that <laughs> signature segment and that. neither of them were was <laughs> it's the <laughs> signature <laughs> segment tough look not a bit tough look did not you know Len hall played for the edmonton flyers i did actually. what were his numbers uh, can he play now <laughs> he, well he played 63 games 70 games is 66 but his only stats for one year and it only shows his goals against average 283 on the 66 games back in year. that day pretty, pretty good. good it's the year numbers were invented <laughs> <laughs> all right let's wrap up the show with a quick preview of the road trip it is brought to you by greta when the boys are in town i want to cut you off Sometimes you look at old goalie numbers and they don't make sense. Like <laughs> goal games played. I'm just looking at Dominic Hasek's numbers from the mid to late nineties. He was one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight straight seasons. The lowest save percentage he had was nine twenty. Oh my God. There it was his high water. Again, I know trap, different time. Trap world, yeah. Nine thirty seven. For the full season in 1998-99, it was 64 games played. I wonder what the uh, goal, the goals per game average is for that whole season for the NHL. He had an under two goals against average. I know, different time, yeah, clutch yeah, and yeah. grab, blah, blah, blah. But still, those numbers That's are insane. Awesome. Who won is your f- most common final score in overtime. Like, <laughs> so when Waz brings up Tommy Salo, and I was looking at his like 904, 905, 910, like not close in the same, <laughs> in the same conversation as a guy like Fair the enough. Dominator. All right, uh, when the boys are in town, Greta is your go-to pre- and post-game spot. When they're out on a road like this, why not saddle up and watch the game there? Intermission and entertainment, good drinks, good food. Our friends at Greta have it all. Uh, all right, I Watch the game with a ski ball ball in your hand? Yeah, and just be like, add dibs on that machine. Yep. Take all the ski ball balls back to your booth and sit with them on your lap. 
Mm-hmm. They love it when you do it. <laughs> you just lay across them. all four seats in the Mario Kart. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're gonna play the Islanders tonight. Uh, what do we think here? I, for me, there is one very winnable game on this trip. It's against the Devils, and you need to find a way. The Islanders are good at home, right, Liam? You did the, you'd look this up for me. Uh, yeah, they're all right. <laughs> uh, points and eight straight at home. Islanders at home are eight, three, and six. Well, points and eight, eight straight with five wins, I believe. <laughs> I think the winnable game on this trip is the Devils. Find a way to steal one against one of the two New York teams, and you got a two and one trip, and I'll be happy with that. Anyone disagree? No, I think, but I think this team needs to be looking at winning all three of them. Now, I'm not saying that you walk away with it if you go, you know, two and one that you're upset. One and two is probably not great, but you need to go into this um, wanting to win all three of them. See, it's interesting. Over the last ten games, it's actually the Devils that have the best record over the last ten of these three teams. Islanders six two really? and two, Rangers six and four, and Devils seven and three. The Devils aren't that good at home though. If this team plays as well as they can, we should be able to beat all three. Seven and one. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that this is it's time for this is now Noblock's time to show up. This team, you got every every thing in my body warns me that this is a five game losing streak waiting to happen from the two games that we've already lost. I just this team this team could go down that road again of defensive lapsing and letting the goalies just hang out to dry i don't want to see it it's it's got we gotta i want to see a win tonight against the islanders you gotta beat the islanders first all right and like also they play the rangers on friday Mm -hmm. how much money's would he put or uh, nobby putting on the board he was an assistant coach there there, was he not yeah Yeah, he was oh yeah revenge let's see a little money on the board nobby so what what do you think with the though so we have skinner tonight yeah Skinner's play. Well, then you I have all three. Jack all Hamlet. three. I think if he plays Thursday, Friday, I think if he plays well, you just play him again against New Jersey and do like the let's make sure we get Is it the Tuesday, two Thursday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think you have, he, then you have a five day break. You can't play him all three though, Liam. Right. Right. That's what I was thinking. Because he's he not Glenn Hall. Two, <laughs> <laughs> if he wins the first two, I think you could do it. Yeah. What's it like? You can't. Yeah, yeah. As of right now, all I'm saying, I, all I'm saying is that Skinner plays tonight. And you re and you well. reevaluate after that game. I'm with Rick, and I am not against rolling him all three. Me neither. I am. I'm not. I wouldn't be upset seeing uh, Pickard against New Jersey myself. But did we play New- Pickard against New Jersey last time? Yep. See, yeah, see, that's and that's well. a and that's a bit of a theory there. If you think that you have your best opportunity to beat Jersey, then you put in your best goaltender to get those to secure those. Two, I don't want to call them easy points, but secure those two two points. And if you can somehow sneak it out the next game, then cool, cool. But yeah, that, that, there's a different thought process there. Yeah, we just get to. I think we get to see some Knobloch isms now. We get to see how he's going to handle this and how he wants this team to go forward. All big thing is the new line combos for tonight. Yep. See if that works. Uh, the Oilers did beat the Islanders back in Knobloch's first game as the head coach, and they got to Ilya Sorokin a little bit in that one. It hasn't been vintage Sorokin so far this season. He hasn't looked, didn't we? Yes. No, we got all our goals late in that game, didn't we? I forget. Uh, it was they scored three in the foot. Yeah. All I know is I got the puck line. Ah. Um, <laughs> in his last 10 games, though, Sorokin has allowed four plus goals in five of them. So he's been a little bit up and down, bit of a roller coaster so far this season. The Islanders also allowed the second most shots against per game in the entire league, and their penalty kill sits dead last at 70%. So there's your little blast of stats for tonight's matchup against if the Islanders. If I'm I'm telling the team to stop shooting at 39, though. Yeah, no more. No more than 39. Yeah, losing. Yeah, yeah, just stop shooting. They Keep will end up. up putting the puck in the net on themselves. Like, yeah. just no more goal, no more shots. What a wild stat. That what is, is that? Is that one in six now? One in six when they have 40 plus shots what on goal. What a fucking crazy stat that is. <laughs> It Let's just, hope they buck that trend. I mean, it, it makes sense, like from the early the early games where we were down early and just hurling yeah, the pocket score effects, from like for yeah. sure. But like, just still forty shots is a lot yeah. of shots. Yeah. Agreed. Derek Ryan is in tonight. Not Adam. Ernie. Who says? Uh, someone called Bob underscore Stoffer. Who's that? He is a blue check mark. I would assume he pays for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> t- <laughs> I'll t- all right. <laughs> Can you write that off? Derek Ryan's in. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Business expense. Yep. I want to know what kind of monetization on the old Twitter account Bobby's doing. All right. We're going to go around and predict how the wins. three games go. How do the three games go, BM? 4 2 win. 4 2 win. 4 2 win. Rick? 3 1 Edmonton. 
five two Edmonton, four three Edmonton. Wow, all three. Liam? Skinner, I would Skinner, like Skinner. to give instead of a score prediction, may I give a <laughs> yeah, game prediction? I'll just catch. I don't care. Do whatever you want. <laughs> She's not going to stop this. She's unbelievable. <laughs> so I think tonight will be a very boring game, but the Oilers will win. Okay. I think against the Devils, there'll be a lot of goals both ways, and I think against the Rangers, it'll be a bit of a tight game, and I think the Rangers will come out on top late. Unfortunately, Dan. I think we're going to beat the Islanders, lose to the Devils, and lose to the Rangers in overtime. That's kind of what I, I like that. I think they're going to beat the Islanders tonight, lose to the Devils, and then stun us and beat the Rangers and finish two, two and one. Didn't they shut down? Like so the the game against the Jersey was not not like pretty fun to watch the first period, and they kind of like slowed it down the second. Down. We, yeah, they got a lot. Done we were up there. in the first though. Yeah, yeah, but you kind of like tighten the game up because it's yeah. a little too end to end there, and you're like, yeah. well, and then they started diving all over the ice. <laughs> oh, all right. That is a wrap. That is a wrap on a Tuesday edition of Oilers Nation Radio. We will be back on Friday to almost fully recap the road trip. We'll talk about the two games and then bring you into the holiday season as well. Chat with everybody then. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube podcast, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it. So hammer that subscribe button.